Whether it's from human interference, climate change, or some kind of natural disaster, the world has unfortunately seen more animals go extinct than you can count at this point. But have you ever wondered if they could be brought back? If the answer is yes, you would not be alone. Welcome back everyone, thanks for tuning in to another video. My name is Kennedy and today we are counting down some of the most out of this world species that scientists are trying to bring back into existence. So get ready, because this is the top 10 extinct animals scientists brought back. Let's get into it. Starting us off at number 10, we have the quagga. Once a prolific subspecies of zebra across South Africa, the quagga was sadly hunted to extinction in the 19th century. The decline in population all started after European colonists took to South Africa and hunted the species nearly into the ground as it competed with domesticated animals for forage. By 1878, the wild population was decimated although some were taken to zoos in Europe in an effort to rehabilitate. But tragically, in the end, the breeding programs were unsuccessful and the last captive quagga died in Amsterdam in 1883. That was until about 100 years later when the quagga became the first extinct animal whose DNA was analyzed and it was then that scientists discovered just how close a match they were to the plains zebra. By 1987, the quagga project began and their mission is to recreate the phenotype of hair coat pattern by selectively breeding the genetically closest subspecies, which as we now know is the zebra. The first full of this project was born in 1988 and since its early days they have seen quite a bit of success. If all goes well, the selectively bred quagga like zebras will be released back into the wild. Coming in at number 9, the Cuban macaw. Prior to the 15th century, these vibrant and colorful birds could be found all over the main island of Cuba. But when Europeans landed, they had other plans for these parrots. Although indigenous populations had hunted the species prior to the colonists' invasion, once the Europeans arrived, the amount soared. Many were hunted or traded, while others were sent back off to Europe to live as cage birds, and eventually, by the late 19th century, between the rampant overhunting and habitat destruction, the very last of the Cuban macaws died, making the species extinct. But according to the British writer Errol Fuller, aviculturists are rumored to have bred birds similar in appearance to the Cuban macaw using the genes of a sister species. So who knows, we could be seeing them fly around Cuba in the near future. Coming in at number 8, the Arabian oryx. Historically speaking, the Arabian oryx could have been seen roaming around throughout most of the Middle East. But by the time the late 19th century rolled around, you were not likely to see one outside of Saudi Arabia. And in the 1930s, the only remaining populations were found either in the Nafa Desert in the north or the Rub Akali in the south. Tragically, it only got worse from there. Starting in the 1930s, it became fairly customary for Arabian princes and oil companies to hunt down the animal and eventually the hunts grew to employ as many as 300 vehicles at once. By the middle of the 20th century, the northern population was effectively extinct and finally the last Arabian oryx died in 1972. Thankfully, a few people had the forethought to send a couple off into captivity and they were effectively reintroduced into the wild a few years later. That being said, they are still an endangered animal, but interestingly, it is the first animal to revert to a vulnerable species after being declared extinct. So it's definitely getting better. Coming in at number 7, Caspian Tigers. During their prime, Caspian Tigers could be found in Turkey and through much of Central Asia, including Iran, Iraq, and northwestern China. But with the Russian colonization of Turkestan during the late 19th century, their population began to be threatened. The first problem was obviously that the tigers were being hunted by large parties of sportsmen or military personnel. Until the early 
20th century, the army was used to clear predators from forests around settlements and potential agricultural lands. In fact, until World War I, about 50 tigers were killed in the forests each year. By the 50s, they became an officially protected species, but even so, by the 1970s, the last remaining Caspian tigers were gone. However, according to recent findings that the Siberian tiger is the closest relative to the Caspian tiger, discussions have been started about introducing the Siberian tiger into a safe space in Central Asia. And hopefully, if they get it right, the tiger would adapt and live successfully where the Caspian tiger once roamed. Coming in at number 6, Heath hens. Once an extremely common bird, heath hens were a subspecies of prairie chicken that could have been found just about anywhere across North America in colonial times. However, like many other species, the population was deeply affected by colonizers who hunted them extensively for food. In fact, it has been speculated that at the first Thanksgiving, it was actually heath hens that were served, not wild turkey. However, by the time the 18th century rolled around, the heath hens developed a reputation as being the poor man's food, as it was cheap and plentiful. And as the hunting continued to soar, the heath hens became more and more of a distant memory. By the 1870s, the animal was virtually extinct from the mainland, with only a few hundred left on Martha's Vineyard, until eventually the late 19th century put a hunting ban in to try and keep the species alive after an estimate. 70 remained. This worked for a while, but due to a myriad of problems, the last remaining heath hen died in 1932. But there is still hope for them to return. As they are closely related to the prairie chicken, scientists have started researching projects aiming at the de extinction of the animal using DNA from preserved cells as a basis for restructuring the DNA of greater prairie chickens. So, with any luck, heath hens could be roaming around soon again. Coming in at number five, Oryx. Considered to be the wild ancestor of modern domestic cattle, oryx were a species of large cattle that once lived in Europe, Asia, and North Africa. And when I say large, I mean large. Apparently, oryx could reach a height of 6.6 .6 feet at the shoulder and weigh up to 3,000 pounds. However, due to hunting and habitation loss, the oryx became extinct when the last individual died in 1627. However, recreating the extinct species may not be an out of this world thought, according to scientists. Starting back in the 1920s, Heinz Heck, a German biologist, initiated a selective breeding program where he attempted to breed back the oryx using several cattle breeds. Essentially, the idea was to breed out what they had been domesticated for, and the result was called Heck cattle. By the 1980s, herds of heck cattle were released into the Netherlands, and since, heck cattle have been crossbred with other European cattle breeds in the hopes of creating a more orcs-like cow. Coming in at number 4, the dodo. Maybe the most recognizable of any extinct species due to just how straight up bananas this bird looked was the dodo. Once upon a time, it was found exclusively on the island of Mauritius, but what was most fascinating about the dodo was that it evolved without any natural predators. However, like many animals that evolved in isolation, the dodo was entirely fearless of humans. However, this fearlessness, coupled with its inability to fly, unfortunately made the dodo an all too easy target for sailors. Although contrary to popular belief, it wasn't just hunting that took out the dodos, but the introduction of other animals like monkeys and pigs into their habitat who destroyed their nests and forced them into a competition for limited resources as well. So have these cartoon looking birds actually been brought back since their 17th century extinction? To be honest, not technically. But scientists are trying. Beth Shapiro, a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of California, said that she has completed fully sequencing the dodo's genome from an ancient DNA based on genetic material extracted from dodo remains, and the next steps are in the works. 
Next up at number 3, the Tasmanian Tiger. The Tasmanian Tiger was once a carnivorous marsupial native to the Australian mainland as well as the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. But beginning in the 19th century, they were perceived as a threat to the livestock of farmers, so overhunting was eventually the largest factor in their demise. Sadly, the last of the Tasmanian Tigers was illegally captured in 1936 by Elias Churchill and sold off to a zoo where she stayed until her death. But a return of the Tasmanian tiger could very well happen in our lifetime. In 1999, the Australian Museum began a cloning project for the animal, an endeavour that was initially dismissed as a publicity stunt. But in 2002, researchers successfully extracted replicable DNA from the specimens. Now, Fast forward to August of last year, and the University of Melbourne announced it will be partnering with a company called Colossal Biosciences to attempt to recreate the animal animal using its closest living relative and return it to Tasmania. Coming in at number 2, the woolly mammoth. I'm sure we're all familiar with the gigantic fuzzy ancestor to the elephant because, well, it's probably one of the most famous extinct species recorded. The last isolated population of woolly mammoths lived on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Ocean until roughly 4,000 years ago, and famously the first actual remains of the behemoth were found in Siberia in the late 18th century. Interestingly, at first, the researchers studying them were incredibly confused because they could not understand how a warm climate animal such as an elephant could have wound up in such a freezing cold area. But eventually, they put all the pieces together and came to the realization that what they had found were the remains of an extinct animal. Amazingly, since those first few skeptical years, thanks to the cold temperatures in the Arctic, the carcasses of the extinct creature have been super well preserved by ice allowing scientists to access the DNA in ways that is not always possible. And thanks to that, it is apparently in the works to try and bring the beasts back into the world. In fact, after a genome project for the mammoth was completed in 2015, it has been proposed the species could be revived through various means. So while it hasn't happened just yet, by the sounds of it, it could be any day now. And last up in our number one spot, the Pyrenean Ibex. While there are many genetic testings in the works along with breeding of similarly extinct species with the hopes of adaptation, if we are talking about an actually extinct animal that has been successfully brought back to life, then the Pyrenean Ibex is in a league of its own. During its prime, it was often found in areas like France, Portugal, Spain, and Andorra. However, starting in the late 19th century, their population began to dwindle until eventually the Pyrenean Ibex was officially declared extinct in 2000. But the amazing thing about this animal is that unlike any of the others on this list, Three years after the last one died, scientists used its frozen cells to clone a calf, making it the first and only animal to have a living specimen exist post extinction. Now, the caveat is that sadly the clone did not survive long after birth. It actually died a few minutes later due to a lung defect. But it did prove that it could be possible to actually bring a species back from the dead. Well, that's all I have for you today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out and let me know in the comments below what animal you wish scientists would bring back from extinction next. See you next time.